Hi, this is Jim from a Northern Academy. In geometry class, we were told that the three medians intersect at one point. A median is a segment that is adjoining a vertex and the midpoint of the opposite side of the vertex. Here in triangle ABC, we already have two medians, which are CD and BE. But the thing is, if you draw the third median, the third median must pass through point A. The third median won't be this way or that way. Instead, it will exactly pass through point F. But why it is like that? Okay, today we are going to work on a proof. On Khan Academy, they used analytical geometry, where the coordinates of the points are being used to show the proof. But today we are going to use a different way that is called area method. Don't worry, there's not a big theory behind the method. The thing is, we are just going to use a lot of areas in our proof. Okay, before we get started, okay, let's look at an example. And I think this example is gonna be very helpful for you to understand the proof that we are going to do. Okay, and this example is about the area of triangle. Okay, now we have a triangle, and I draw a line in the middle to split the triangle's area into S1 and S2. And let's assume the length of this part is x, and the length of this part is y. Then the question is, what is the ratio of S1 and S2? Okay, let me write this down, S1 over S2. I think many of you can notice that these two small triangles they have a common altitude. And where is the altitude? It is from this vertex to the bottom side. Okay, so this one. And uh, let's say the length of the altitude is h. Okay, then according to the formula of a triangle, s1 is equal to 1 half base times height, so 1 half times x times h. And s2 is equal to 1 half times y times h. And therefore, 1 half, 1 half canceled, and h and h canceled. And therefore, the area ratio is here the base ratio of the two triangles, which is x over y. And particularly, if this line here is the median, then we know x is going to be equal to y, and therefore s1 is equal to s2. All right. Again, to understand this question well, it's going to be very helpful for you to understand the proof that we are going to do. All right, now let me simplify this diagram by a little bit. So this triangle ABC here. And here we draw and extend AF toward a point G on the side BC. Now in order to prove the three medians intersect at one point, and we already got two medians in this diagram. So what we need to prove is converted into this question, how we can prove the point G is the midpoint of the side BC, or namely, how do we prove BG is equal to CG? All right, now I'm going to assume the area of triangle ADF is S1. Then if we follow the similar logic in this example here, then which triangle in this diagram also has the same area, S1? And the answer should be BDF. And the reason is this. For these two triangles, first of all, they have equal bases, which are AD and BD, because CD here is one of the medians, and D is the midpoint. And secondly, if you draw an altitude from point F towards side ADB, and then you can see this altitude is the common altitude of these two triangles. And therefore, so it's the same as this situation here. Okay. These two triangles, they have the common altitude and they have equal bases. All right, for triangle AEF, if we assume the area is S2, then which triangle also has the same area? The answer should be this one, okay, S2. Then we have another two triangles here at the bottom. And we want to prove, again, we want to prove BG is equal to CG. And these two triangles, you can see, they also share a common altitude, which is from point F toward the side BGC. And therefore, actually, if we can prove these two triangles, they have the same area, because now they have 
the same altitude. If they also have the same area, and therefore they must have equal bases, which means BG is equal to CG. So now this question becomes how we can prove these two triangles here. Let me say this area is S3 and this is S4. So this question becomes how we can prove S3 is equal to S4. Okay, how we can prove this. Now let's see. In this diagram, we have 2s1 and 2s2. Then is there any relationship between s1 and s2? Okay. Now I'm going to draw an auxiliary line by connecting D and E here. Okay, by connecting D and E. Now again, in this diagram, we already have two meetings. And therefore, you know, D and E, these two points are the midpoints for A, B, and A, C, respectively. And therefore, DE here is called a mid-segment of the triangle ABC. Hey, by the way, for the mid-segment, it is a segment that is joining any two midpoints of any two sides in a triangle. And one of the properties of the mid-segment, as you may remember from the geometry class, it is a parallel to the base of the triangle. Then in this diagram here, we have a DB. CE, which is a trapezoid. Again, we are going to use a lot of areas in this proof. Okay. Then in this trapezoid, if you pay attention to these two triangles, triangle DBC and the triangle EBC, as you can see, these two triangles, they share a common base, which is BC. Also, if you draw two altitudes from the vertex D and the vertex C, then you know these two altitudes, they must be the same. That is because, you know, DE here is a parallel to BC. And these two altitudes, which are the perpendicular segments toward BC, and these two altitudes, they are trapped between these two parallel lines, and therefore they must be equal. So we have triangle BDC's area, and in geometry, we can use a bracket to show the area of the shape. Triangle BDC's area, or BCD's area, is equal to 1 half base times height. And let's say the altitude here, the length is a capital H. Okay, it doesn't matter which variable we are using here. 1 half BC times H. And uh, triangle EBC's area is equal to one half base times H as well. And therefore, you can see triangle BCD's area is equal to triangle EBC's area. Also, as you may notice from these two triangles, this part or triangle BFC is the common area of these two triangles. And therefore, if I subtract triangle BFC from these two triangles, then the rest parts must then the rest parts must have the same area. So you can see BCD subtract the BFC and we have S1 left. EBC subtract BFC we have S2 left, and therefore S1 is equal to S2. When I was in middle school, my math teacher called this butterfly theorem. And that is in the trapezoid, the two triangles that are formed by the two legs of the trapezoid and the two diagonals have the same area. And this is called butterfly theorem. Um, I think as we can imagine, so these two things here look like the, 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 the two wings of a butterfly. Yeah. I, I promise I was trying to draw a butterfly. Okay, but anyway, so you know this. All right, I know some students might be wondering, all right, so you want to prove BG is equal to CG, and then we convert it into... Uh, proving these two triangles here, they have the same area, S3 is equal to S4, but why we are doing S1 is equal to S2 here? Actually, 
this is a critical step that would lead us to S3 is equal to S4. Okay, now let's see how. I'm going to simplify this diagram by a little bit. Okay, so wiping these things out. Okay, now that we proved S1 is equal to S2, so we have these four triangles which have the same area, and I will call them as S1. Okay, and this is S3, and this is S4. Okay, now let's pay attention to these two triangles. This big triangle, ABF, and this small triangle, FBG. As you can see, these two triangles, they share a common altitude from B to AG. Okay, now this is, again, corresponding to the example that we were explaining at the beginning. Now that these two triangles, they have the same altitude, and therefore, okay, again, you look at the example here, the area ratio is the, just the base ratio because here the altitude is canceled in this diagram, right? Sorry because this altitude is canceled in this expression. So we can write 2s1 over s3. We can write this ratio into the base ratio. Then who are the bases here? Now 2s1 is corresponding to the base AF, and s3 is corresponding to the base FG. All right, that is on the left-hand side of the triangle. Now if you look at the right-hand side, okay, we are going to do the same thing. For the right-hand side, again, you pay attention to this big triangle, AFC, whose area is also 2S1, and this orange triangle, S4, sorry, and this triangle, FGC, whose area is S4, again, they are having the same altitude, which is from vertex C. I think you can imagine this, even though I didn't draw it here. And therefore, the area ratio now 2s1 over s4 now, right? The blue triangle over the orange, the blue triangle over the orange triangle is equal to AF, the base ratio, AF over FG. Now, what can we get from these two expressions? As you can find on the right hand side of the two equations, it's AF over FG, and therefore the left-hand side of the two equations must be the same. And in geometry, this is called transitive. Actually, in, also in algebra, this is called transitive property, right? Transitive property. And therefore, okay, I'm going to write on the left. So 2s1 over s3 is equal to 2s1 over s4. And then 2s1, 2s1 canceled. And therefore, you have s3 is equal to s4. Okay, what does that mean here? S3 is equal to S4 for these two triangles here. If S3 is equal to S4, then BG must be equal to CG. And therefore, G is the midpoint. AFG is the third median, which also passes through point F. And here, the intersection point of the three medians is called a centroid. It's called a centroid. And there is a very important property in the centroid that is the centroid would divide the median into two parts. And the ratio of the two parts is a 2 over 1. We also learned this in geometry. In next class, we are going to show a proof for this property in two different methods. All right, before we end the video today, I have a last question for everyone. In this diagram, now I have a question. In triangle ABC, we have a 4S1 and a 2S3. Is there any relationship between S1 and S3? Are they equal? In the next video, we are going to announce the answer. Also, we are going to prove another important property of the centroid. That is, the centroid would divide the median into two parts, the ratio of which is 2 over one okay thank you for watching if you have any questions or suggestions please put it on the comment and i will see you next time